hi guys i hope you're doing well joyce here again with another video and uh guys i hope you have watched my yesterday's video on um tips on how you can migrate to canada and i saw a lot of questions you know i'm posting in all my social media platforms youtube facebook and tiktok and also instagram so i'm reading comments and uh people are asking me like i'll be answering those questions in videos so today's video will be answering questions on what is happening with visitors visa a lot of you have applied visitors visa some have applied since last year others um, this year and now we are going to september and people are still waiting so i thought it's good i address i'm not an immigration consultant i may not know exactly what is happening but i'll tell you um based on my experience in the past previously like last year uh, this is exactly what happened actually after covid remember there was a huge backlog people that had applied visitors visa they accumulated there were so many of them and it was the same time the same thing as what is happening right now because there are so many people that have applied for their visas they have gone for biometrics and they don't know what next so i want to give this answer the problem is not with the agents that have done your visa. The problem is not with you. The problem is not with anyone. Okay? Guys, what I want you to get is that after you submit your application and you go for biometrics, that visa is done. So do not say that somebody has conned you because the visa has not yet been delivered. After you have done your biometrics in any country, please get wisdom because sometimes lack of knowledge will make you make throw tantrums to people that are innocent. As long as you have done your biometrics, you have gone to VFS and you have done your biometrics and you have, you have submitted your biometrics, that visa is done. So now the decision remains with the embassy. It's no longer with you. It's no longer with the agent. The decision is now with the embassy. The embassy will decide whether to give you a visa or not. Remember that once you submit your application, you are not guaranteed of a visa. There is no country in this world whereby you can apply for a visa and you're guaranteed. Because a lot of agents, a lot of agents, sorry guys, a lot of agents are telling you that, oh, this, this is, actually the questions that a lot of you ask is, is that visa guaranteed? Never ask that question again. There is no visa that is guaranteed. It's just like asking, that you're going to the U.S. Embassy to get your to do your interview for the visa, and you're asking whether the visa is guaranteed. You know that is that is a very funny question. There is no country that can guarantee a visa, and there is no agent that has connections with the embassies. If some if you hear agents start talking like that, they are heading into conning you. A, a, a genuine agent will tell you, "I don't have any connections with the embassies." and I cannot guarantee you a visa. If those two sentences are not in the person who is applying your visa, then most likely they are conning you. If an agent starts telling you that they are offering you jobs, and they are also helping you in settling in Canada, and they are in Kenya, start questioning that agent. So for me, the agents that I've always used, I am strict. I will tell them, tell people that you cannot guarantee them visa, and also tell them that, Sorry, guys, there's a phone that keeps coming. Also tell them that the visa is not guaranteed and tell them that you do not know where the, when the visa is coming out and there's nothing you can do after the biometrics is done. And if the visa is denied, yeah. people keep calling me. And the visa, if the visa is denied, there's nothing you can do. You cannot appeal. You can only buy time and then reapply again. Okay? So... <sighs> I hope that is clear. A lot of people have applied for their visas. They are still waiting and there's nothing, nothing you can do. There's also another question I've been getting a lot. I almost forgot. Yeah. About jobs and visitors visa. You can never work with a visitor visa in any country, not just Canada. Even in the US, even in the UK, in the UK, even in Australia, there is no country that can allow you to work with a visit visa. Even in Kenya, Africa. You cannot come here as a visitor and start working. You'll be sued. You'll be taken to court for that. So for you to work in any country, you must have a work permit. You must process a work permit. So once you, you enter Canada with a visitor visa, you'll have to process for a work permit. And for Canada, right now, 
there is still that opportunity of you being able to convert that visitor visa into a work permit until next year, 2025 February, if they extend well and good. This work permit for Canada is unique. It's not like for the US. For Canada, you must have an LMIA certificate. A lot of agents in Kenya are saying that they are taking you to Canada with caregiver pathway. How are they going to get that LMIA? Some of us that are Canadian citizens, some of us that are recruiters, we are not able to get that LMIA for you. So how is an agent in Kenya going to give you a work permit for Canada? You guys, sometimes you just need to ask those guys questions. Tell them they, are, they should stop talking about work permits. It's not possible. Well, I know there are pathways that give work permits because if, if a program is introduced to recruit internationally, like there's a a video that I'm going to do after this uh, for Alberta and for New Brunswick. Those two communities, those two provinces have been recruiting internationally and they are going to give you a work permit and I'll tell you how they are doing it. And it's going to be LMI exempt, okay? I'll tell you how they are doing that because we also have got LMI exempt. We, ha we also have got, oops, I'm, all, I'm almost falling and I'm not going to edit. Uh, we, are, we are also going to have LMI exempt work permits. Yeah, but for, for, the, for the visitor visa, because that was the reason for this video, you cannot work with a visitor visa. Once you enter Canada, you must look for opportunities on how you can convert that visitor visa into something like a work permit. So you can either go to school, you can convert to study permit, and then you go to school. Once you go to school, you'll get a, a, a work visa as an international student. You can also change into asylum. Once you become a refugee, they will give you a work permit. That one will happen in, in three weeks, in three weeks to two months, maximum of one month. You'll have if you if you're very quick in processing your work permit. Huh? The other one is getting a job offer that has LMI. You can also that one can take more than six months. That's why I normally say it's not easy because by the time you find an employer. And then this employer advertises this job, and then after the advertisement, the, 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 issuing of, uh, the issuing of LMIA, it can take more than six months. And remember, you can only stay up to six months as a visitor in Canada, unless now you extend. After six months, you have to leave Canada or extend, okay? So you have also to look at your timelines. If you already have a visa, because some of you are telling me that you have a visa, but you don't have a recruiter, why don't you just enter Canada first? If you already have a visa, just come. Sometimes there's a lot of information that you learn when you enter Canada that you do not know when you're outside Canada, because you'll come and interact with the people that are already there. So sometimes I just encourage you to just come, enter Canada. Once you're in Canada, you'll find ways of interacting with people, and you'll know what people normally do. If you want a one-on-one -on -one with me, like to talk with me directly, I'm not an immigration consultant, but I've got those fans that really want to talk to me. You can, you can come to my Telegram. The link will be on the video, on the description of this video and then on the comment section. You can come to my Telegram and then book to talk to me, okay? I'll not, I'll not solve all your problems, but at least when you talk to me, you'll have at least some sense of direction. I do not guarantee any jobs. I have never guaranteed people jobs. Okay? So come to me with an open mind, knowing that I'm not giving you jobs like that. You're coming to me to gain information and then to expand your thinking and your reasoning. Uh, so guys, that's it for this video. Visitor visa, let's hold on. There's a, they have not been releasing visa. Remember, it's because we have got a lot of, normally what happens, in one year, Canada has a limit of immigrants that normally come. So like this year, we were supposed to, and last year I think it was 500,000 in total. That is, this includes the visitor's visa, which are temporary visas, and also the permanent visas. A total of half a million. Last year alone, we had 2.5 million temporary visas for visitor's visa, 2.5 million. So they exceeded. So now they are struggling to reduce this number before they start releasing more visas. They still need people because they, they need a lot of immigrants. But they have to clear the 2.5 people that are temporarily in Canada. So they have to give them permanent residency so that they can create a vacancy, a vacancy, for, a vacancy for other temporary immigrants. 
So you guys, maybe that's why they're holding on to your um, visitors' visa applications so that they can give those ones in Canada PR. Once th those people become permanent, now you, your doors will open to come and become temporarily again, and then like that. Right now, they are giving a lot of PR. We have never seen people receive PR like this season. So many PRs have been, like Canada is very easy to get PR compared to the US. So just hold on. If you get a visa, you're lucky. If you don't, if you don't get, then don't kill yourself. Don't kill yourself. Life still has to continue, guys. And there are so many opportunities all over the world, okay? So it's a 50-50 thing. The US, I normally say, is a 90-10. 90, Actually, it's 2010, 20-80, okay? 20 to 80 US, okay? Chances of getting are very slim for US visa, but for Canada, it's 50-50. That's what I'm trying to say. So guys, see you on the next one. Make sure you watch my next video, subscribe, so that you get a lot of tips and you learn. Goodbye.